There's a new Deadpool movie out, which is really exciting. That's why I'm wearing my white pants. This one's called Deadpool and Wolverine. I saw it last night and I'm here to give you my thoughts in a spoiler-free review. But if you've been on the internet for the last 24 hours, you will find out that people are so absolutely pathetic, they have no problem giving themselves a little clout by spoiling things for you. Not here though. Let's talk about Deadpool and Wolverine. Ryan Reynolds and Huge Jacked Man are back as their awesome characters, Deadpool and Wolverine. And I just have to say, X whoa, oh my, what? Oh, Professor Xavier is communicating with me through telepathy, telling me you should subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. I post movie reviews every week on the channel, along with movie rants, roasts, live streams, all movies all the time. Uh, thank you, Professor. Carry on, and thank you for subscribing if you did. Deadpool is now part of the MCU, which is still weird to wrap my cock around. But because of this, his sandbox just got a lot bigger to play in. He's got Disney, he's got Mickey Mouse fondling those balls, ready to do his bidding. Or maybe it's, maybe it's vice versa. Because it turns out Marvel and Disney need him a lot more than he needs them. Countless jokes are said at the expense of the House of Mouse, at Disney, at Marvel, and even at Fox. A studio once upon a time, now owned by Disney because they own everything. This movie's once again rated R for violence, a lot of blood, a lot of vulgarity, no nudity, no sexual situations really outside of some candid conversation. So if you're thinking about taking your 10 year old to the movie and you don't care if they see a bunch of people get their heads blown off and hands chopped off, but a nipple, that's gonna be a bit much for you. Fear not, friend, you can take your little one to this. And they will come out on the other side just as pure and innocent because they did not witness some side boob. Just a little bit of decapitation. Short for decapitation. Actually, they see a lot of decapitation. They see a lot of sword play, knife play, blades, claws, everything you can think of. It's ripping through bodies, lobbing off body parts. This movie is not for the faint of heart, but it still has a very comic booky stylized look to it. It's light. It's light and vulgar at the same time. It's part of the MCU, so is it ruined now? Did Disney ruin it, is what some people will say. Uh, no, I, I like this movie a lot. I'm a big fan of the Deadpool movies, and this one's no exception. I will say, and I did say actually last night when I was leaving the theater in my out-of-theater reaction, this movie's storyline, the plot, is absolute garbage. It, it's a shit show. It, it barely functions as a narrative at all. For some people, that is actually going to be a problem. Some people are going to these movies expecting there to be a coherent beginning, middle, and end. But this movie functions more in the same way as an Austin Powers 3, where there's tons of cameos, there's a lot of like smaller sections that don't really amount to anything other than fan service, and when it's all said and done, you can loosely stitch a plot together to get to the finish line, but if you think about anything for even a second, your brain's gonna explode and come out your ears. A top level explanation of the story is Wade needs to save his timeline, but in order to do so, he needs an anchor person to help him. Well, Wolverine from Logan had died from his world, which is also weird to think that Deadpool's in the same universe as the Logan movie. That movie felt very post-apocalyptic, like there wasn't a lot of joy. Anyway, regardless, that was the anchor. So Wade's world is going to be destroyed in like 72 hours, forcing Wade to have to find another Wolverine to replace the one that's missing. That's all I'm going to give you. But the way that this plays out, the way that all this happens is complete nonsense. And that's fine. I'm not, I'm not saying like that bothered me. I do think they waste way too much time though on exposition. And even the writer knows this. Deadpool makes several jokes about the long monologues and why this is all kind of tedious and nonsensical. So they're in on their own shtick. It's poking fun at the multiverse and what a disaster it's been. It's poking fun of itself. It's poking fun of old studios. Everything's up for grabs. Everything's on the table. This Deadpool, unlike the predecessors though, feels far more Naked Gun-esque than it does a comic book Deadpool movie. This one goes for broke in that department. Lots of gags, tons of humor, there is still some drama, there is still an emotional core somewhere down in there, but it's really hard to take any of it really seriously. As for the villain Cassandra Nova, 
She's better than Ajax from the first Deadpool movie, but she's not much better. She's she's fine. She's she's okay. She gets the job done. But it's not about her. This is a buddy road trip comedy with Logan and with Wade Wilson. And in that department, it freaking succeeds like no other. They have such great chemistry together. The rapport is second to none. I really like these actors together, and clearly they like being together doing this. It's no secret that Ryan Reynolds has been trying to make a Wolverine Deadpool movie for many, many years, and just like getting Deadpool greenlit all those years ago, he managed to get this done as well. Because there's so much I can't say because I don't want to ruin anything for you, I do want to let you know I'm going to put out a spoiler video next. That's going to go into all the fun details about everyone that shows up, the cameos, the situational humor, and so forth, as I can remember from one time watching. But I do want to say, overall, I had a blast with this movie. I was laughing alongside my kids. There's a ton of references they didn't know. I'm really happy we watched some other older movies in the superhero genre to get them kind of refreshed on everything that took place before this film. Because this movie, way more than the others, is catering to fans of comic book films. Catering to the nerds that put in the work the last couple decades. There are women like my wife who love the first Deadpool because not only is it really funny, but it has the love story romantic angle to it. Who wasn't as big on the second one about family. So this third one I think is going to alienate her even more. Sure, it's the friendship angle, but it really goes all in on that nerd culture. And I think you are going to turn off a lot of people that even like the first two films. Me, I, I, had, I had a great time. My kids loved it as well. So there you go. There's my spoiler-free reaction. Tons of action, tons of swearing, tons of violence, tons of Deadpool. Lots of Deadpool. Let me know if you saw it already. Theaters have been packed full. Ticket sales are up. Deadpool might very well be Marvel Jesus. We'll find out as this MCU experiment continues. Until then, please think about liking this video and subscribing. Look forward to that uh, spoiler video up next. And if you really like my commentary, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm just talking about first world issues that you might be able to relate to, such as people obnoxiously listening to their phone without headphones on in public full volume. That's fun while I'm trying to enjoy a meal. When little Tabby over there has got her TikTok going 100% audio, that's what I want to hear when I'm trying to enjoy a burger. If you love what I'm doing, I also have Patreon, Adam Does Movies right there, or YouTube memberships. You can be either one. It really helps keep the lights on here, and I would appreciate it. Thank you kindly. All right. See you next time, stranger.